the select board meeting and the forum for our special town meeting to order. Carolyn? I'm just wanting to know where you wanted me to sit. Um, that's up to, I think there you'll be better viewed by the public. Okay. That public. Okay. Well, yeah, you're right. Sit there, that's better. <laughs> we haven't figured this out yet. Can you share the yep. PowerPoint? Yes, I will share. Thank you. Hey, Jane. Probably want to tell them that this is just for information purposes only. No, no debate. Okay. It's in the slides. It's in the slides. Okay. They can ask questions, but it's no debate. Do you want me to say something? No, it's in the okay. slides. Right. I'm gonna go ahead and read that. So as we get uh, started here, uh, welcome to the special town meeting public forum. Uh, the, pu the special town meeting is October 27th at the Hopkins Ac um, Academy at 7 p.m. So the intent of the forum um, is to provide voters with an overview and a context for the annual town meeting to improve the voters' understanding of individual warrant articles and offer voters an opportunity to ask questions. But there, there will be no debating going back and forth, but to ask for clarification. The forum is not intended to take any vote, favorable or unfavorable, other than the select board's recommendation. Provide any group or individual the opportunity to advocate for a particular article or speak for or against an article. I apologize, but people are going to pop in and I have to, I'm doing the two things, so it'll be just a lag sometimes. Thank you. All right, Article 1 is the Omnibus Budget General Fund. And I'm going to go through these in an order that hopefully will make sense to you because some of them um, go hand in hand. So the first uh, line item that I'd like to talk about, the increase is uh, 122, which is the Board of Selectmen salaries. Uh, we had an employee on medical leave, and this was the cost to hire a temporary employee to fill in during those six weeks. Uh, 145, which is the treasurer's salary, and 152, the human resources salary, this is an increase of a part-time assistant that is shared between these two departments. Increasing this position to full-time will give each of these departments more clerical assistance, as well as providing much-needed support when either positions are out for uh, an extended illness or vacation or other related absences. The collector's hours has been adjusted, which is 146. Um, at the last annual town meeting, uh, we um, requested an increase of 2.5 hours to assist with tax titles in the treasurer's office. Those two hours were taken on by the collector's assistant, those two and a half additional hours to help with that. But we're realizing, she, um, you know, she spends her time in her, at her desk at the collector's office and it's more efficient and makes more sense for that, uh, those hours to go into the collector's um, line item because it does complement both departments. 190 is the town building's property insurance, and I'm going to skip to 945, which is also the benefits and accidents insurance. This covers the increases in premiums, premiums due to reinsurance costs at renewal. Those renewal costs have been extremely expensive. And then 210, which is the police salaries. 222, which is the communications, better known as the dispatchers' salaries, and 422 in highways and salaries. These are all the results of, a, of the collective bargaining negotiations that were completed last summer. Uh, this summer, I'm sorry, the last few months. So this is an impact that is uh, as a result of um, the salary adjustments from those uh, union negotiations. So, Amy, this is Amy Fiden from the Finance Committee. Okay. So, uh, it looks like the um, how we are going to 
last year we used the certified free cash and the ARPA money, which is ARPA money is the money that was given to us from the government. Um, it is was a one-time thing. Um, and we used 400000 to balance the budget last year. Um, actually, to balance the... Um, we, we balanced the budget with the 200 on the free cash, sorry, I wrote this one second. At the annual town meeting, we balanced with free cash of 254,571. We add on what we need, which is the um, $219,528. If you add those two together, we are going to use our certified free cash of $474,099. So that's what we're gonna to use to balance the budget. That's where the money's gonna come from, okay? Does anyone have any questions where the money's coming from? <laughs> any questions? All right. Article two is the sewer, water, and Hadley Media Enterprise Funds. So uh, for 440, the sewer salaries, the 450, the water salaries, these are also a result of negotiations as well as there is a long-term employee who will be retiring, so there are some buyouts in that calculation as well. 450, which is expenses, that increase is due to water pump upgrades at the plant, which is 15,000, water upgrade, meter reading, and testing equipment, which is 7,500. Because those are less, the amount was lower than what typically um, would go outside of the, um, the operating budget. And then 599 is Hadley Media Salaries. Our new director was hired for more hours than the former director was working. And the funding for that, Amy? Okay, so the funding for that will be coming from, let's, okay, uh, so I'll read it out. Uh, we have the revenue um, sources of wastewater, water, Hadley Media, they're equaling uh, Two million three hundred seventy two thousand nine hundred and fifty six plus we're going to take a hundred and forty nine thousand three hundred and sixty three from the revenues I mean sorry from the reserves which will equal two million five hundred twenty two dollars or I'm sorry five million five hundred and twenty two thousand three hundred and nineteen dollars and that's what's going to equal your um, total enterprise fund budget, which is two million five hundred twenty-two thousand three hundred nineteen dollars. <laughs> so we're, it's 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 the revenues plus the reserves, which you'll see up there. Um, any questions on that? Linda had to make sure I was straight on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a little confusing. All right, moving on to Article 3, prior year capital balances. Uh, these are projects that are either completed or have a leftover balance um, from projects that were never started or the amount requested, requested is no longer valid and will, will have to be, the scope has to be redone and, and the value reassessed. Re, uh, um, uh, I'm trying to find the actual up-to-date value of the project. So these are cleanup prior capital balances from uh, former special town meeting or annual town meeting. Um, so the public safety complex installation from 2014, the public safety complex the Sally Port and repairs from 2017 and HVAC attic venting from 2018. Those have all been returned to the capital stabilization fund, which is where they came from. And then 3.2 is the school security upgrades. These funds that are left over will be redirected to partially pay for the school ceiling tile replace, replacement, which is listed in the capital request. This is just pay, um, hot, helping to offset part of the cost of that.
All right. Now I need to hand this over to our director of DPW, Scott McCarthy. Scott, you want to come up here? Carolyn, the police cameras are actually the first thing listed in the slideshow. Oh, I'm sorry. Can, this is first. Sorry. It's just the order that I went by the list on the hit there. So Mike's first. Mike, you're first. I'm first. Yep. For the body cameras. Thanks, Jen. <clears throat> sorry. Hello again. Hi. I was just here a couple hours ago. Yeah. Okay, so this is just a quick three-slide um, PowerPoint that I put together to hopefully explain to everybody what we are, uh, what we're asking for for our capital request. Um, about four years ago, I believe it was, we were went to town meeting and we requested half the money for a full body camera program and cruiser camera program that we put into. Uh, that we put into practice. We were the first department uh, in the area, pretty wide area, that had a full uh, body camera program. Uh, and we were able to get uh, our state rep, Dan Carey, to put an earmark in the state budget for us of 50000 which covered a little more than half. And then we went to capital for, I think, 30 more uh, for the full program. We are kind of in the in the shorter end of our upgrade time that they estimated, they estimate three to five years uh, as to when you're gonna need to upgrade and replace these things. We're in the early end of it, third, we're in the third year. Uh, our cruiser camera system seems to be working without problem, but our body camera system, we are ended, we're coming to the end of our warranty period and we're losing cameras faster than we can kind of get them back into service. The batteries aren't holding a charge for as long. And if you notice some of the pictures that I put up there, it's a little tough to see. But the top right hand corner is basically a top right and bottom left hand corner are basically just pictures of our server system that is going to need a replacement. We are at 75% capacity of saving these videos and that is basically because we're trying to uh, the the one of the things that came from the police reform bill was that they're going to come out very soon with a body camera policy. It's supposed to be best practices. We are trying to kind of get ahead of that because we know it's coming. I've kind of been a part of some of the discussions in there, so I know what it's going to look like. We're trying to get ahead of it. And one of the things that they are mandating is saving a lot of these videos for a lot longer than we had initially anticipated which takes up server space. It's actually, believe it or not, cheaper to have a uh, live server. I don't know how you say it in technical terms, but an actual server in your building than it is to pay for uh, putting it in the cloud. So what the costs are and what we're requesting is if you look down the left-hand side there, that's, that's what we're going to be replacing. The server system. That bottom right hand picture is our docking system because we're getting different cameras. One of the other things that kind of handcuffed us here, no pun intended, uh, is that Motorola purchased the company that we are using for the body cameras, which is WatchGuard. And of course, they not only discontinued the cameras that we're using, but um, changed the pricing and all the other stuff. So that also needs to be replaced as well. And there's just one more slide. One more set of bad news. Um, we did look for grants to obviously do this project. Uh, as I mentioned earlier when I was here for Coffee with a Cop, uh, unfortunately, being first didn't pay off for us this time because they are only offering grants for new or expansion programs. They are not offering them for updates or upgrades. So we're stuck there. We, don't, we can't get a grant uh, to do this. Uh, again, I already mentioned we're nearing the extent, the, uh, the end of our extended warranty, and uh, I also already mentioned the retention period, so we have to save videos for longer. The total request, I don't know if you still have that up there, the exact amount is 46464 was the quote that we got. Um, we anticipate to hopefully be able to do it for a little bit less than that, but that was the the most recent quote they gave us. That's our only request on capital this year. That's not my dump truck. 
Thank you. Scott's dump truck. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. 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 Thank Good evening, everyone. Uh, Scott McCarthy, Director of Public Works. Uh, Jason Hall, uh, Foreman of Vehicle Maintenance. If you have any questions, <clears throat> he could maybe answer also. So our first slide is a 2008 uh, one-ton dump truck of the highway department. Uh, it's roughly 80,000 miles. It's starting to uh, really see a lot of rot uh, the body of it has been replaced uh, a few years ago, and it's just met its kind of met its useful life for us. Uh, and a replacement is probably two years out, so within the next two years, the truck will be definitely needed for replacement. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> like Scott said, it's service life. It's another way. It's on the road daily. Um, I said the front of the cab, we really can't see from the pictures, are starting to go <clears throat> inside the truck. We're on the motor mounts. Uh, I just replaced all the cab mounts because they were all rotted this summer. Um, and while doing that, you notice a lot of the floors starting to get punky. Um, same thing with the radiator support, that's starting to get punky too. Um, and we all know with New England, once a vehicle starts rusting, it's gonna start taking off, and like Scott said, being two years out, it's gonna really start being a pain. That's a 1997 international dump truck. Uh, it's a plow and sand truck for us. It's uh, one of the, the older, older ones in the fleet. Uh, the truck is starting to really uh, rot out, as you can see on the door bottom. Uh, there's several pic there's other pictures of the frame and things that are also rotted on it. Uh, we used. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, it, and the frame is starting to rot out and separate. Uh, about 10 years ago, the truck was uh, repainted uh, on the body, sandblasted the frame, and the bed was replaced 10 years ago. And now the truck has met its, its useful life for us. It, it's starting to become unrepairable. And it, it, is, it does act as a sander also in the winter time. Uh, Uh, that's the water department's uh, daily driver pickup truck. Uh, it is a uh, F-350. F-3, 2000. 2014. 2014 okay. truck, okay. Uh, approximately 85,000 miles. It's starting to uh, show some rust and rot and some minor mechanical defects. Uh, we're looking to replace the truck with one uh, that has a cover over the back. The, uh, all the water department's tools have to be removed every night. Uh, we don't have garaging for the vehicle. So any equipment has to be removed in and out every night. And we're looking to upgrade it so it's got an enclosed back so our the equipment is out of the weather. And once again, the truck is probably two years out on a wait. Uh, nothing is readily available. So we're trying to be somewhat proactive uh, the truck will be well over 100,000 miles when the replacement comes. Uh, 2005 Ford, uh, it's our vehicle maintenance truck that goes around if we have any mechanical breakdowns in the field, uh, fire, police, uh, that's the road truck that goes out uh, and it's 
rotted out totally uh, beyond repair and we're looking to uh, replace it with the sewer department's truck if if granted the sewer department truck would be rolled into uh, the, the vehicle maintenance truck that that per that truck came from the sewer department originally it was handed down yeah it was handed down from the sewer department it was a replacement that was handed down to the vehicle maintenance um, it had a pickup bed on it that was completely rotted um, we put the flatbed on it and like I said again wouldn't be New England rot 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 um, like Scott said it is on a second motor uh, the motor was put in about a hundred thousand miles on the truck the original motor uh, something internally happens so we put a reman in there um, and you also the transmission is starting to go on its way out to him being a plow truck and you know being plowing since 2005 it's starting to take its toll on its transmission you know when I take it sometimes you can actually feel the transmission kind of slipping sometimes and we all know once transmission start slipping it's soon to be non-movable Uh, 1984 case tractor uh, that was given to the town from the military it's a military surplus tractor and we use it for uh, some roadside mowing uh, mowing of the transfer station uh, sewer pump stations water stations and other town property that needs to be mowed with a brush hog on the back uh, recently the tractor uh, was giving us some problems uh, we cannot get parts for it. It's too old, and it had a catastrophic failure on the rear of the PTO, and it is out of commission, uh, unrepairable. And like I said, it, it's a military surplus. It's it's really not even our tractor was given to us by the Air Force. And we looked into trying to get another one, and right now the program is not in place so we cannot get any surplus equipment from the government. Uh, 1995 John Deere payloader. Uh, it is uh, starting to have some mechanical problems and parts are no longer available for it. Uh, there is the handle that runs all the hydraulics in the machine is one of the biggest problems with it right now they don't make the part anymore uh, we they tr we tried retrofitting it with a newer model part and it does not work to its full potential and it does have a little uh, problem with operation uh, the uh, machine was had a lot of work done to it yeah in the past five years in the last five years and now it's just become to the point where it's becoming unrepairable because of the part situation. They don't make parts for it anymore. It's, it's just, in their eyes, too old already. And it does have a lot of rot and stuff in the cab of the vehicle. Uh, the, <clears throat> this is the uh, 1995 Ford factor truck. Uh, it's used by the water department, highway department, sewer department. Uh, if you have any sewer clogs or things of that nature, that's what the reel on the front is for. You put water up the line and you can clear a, a clog and the rest of it's a vacuum system for cleaning catch basins, any kind of sewer debris, etc. And the, uh, the Vactor tank is very, is very rotted. You can see the pictures there. Uh, that's daylight going through from the inside of the tank to the outside. Uh, the vehicle maintenance department has made multiple attempts of patching it and we put a patch on and another spot just uh, shows up. It's just so rotted, it's beyond repair. We, we did look at an option of putting another tank on that body, but it's, it's you, you can't do it. Nothing matches up, it's just too old. Uh, so, with that being said, you'd have to you'd have to start from scratch with the the whole blower assembly, 
uh, the, the motor, everything that runs that Vactor setup would have to be replaced. And just, I don't, that's not a good decision for us to do, put a brand new body on an old chassis of a truck that's starting to, you know, have rust and rot uh, in the cab and in the drive line. So we're, we are looking for a full replacement. That's more, that's more pictures of the back truck. You can see all the holes and things in it. Uh, this is the DPW uh, mini payloader. Uh, it's, it's a 2017 loader. Uh, it's one of the pieces of equipment that we use the most and it is really starting to, uh, it's not that old, but it's becoming a real maintenance problem for us. Uh, I'm not sure if the quality of the machine isn't there, but it's just a real problem. It's starting to cost us a lot of money to maintain it. It's out of warranty. Uh, the warranty was extended a little bit on it because we had so many problems, but now it is out of warranty and the problems just keep recurring. Uh, Jason just uh, put quite a bit of work into it again to keep it going. And once again, it is one of our most used pieces of equipment, uh, spring, summer, fall, winter. Um, like Scott said, this, even though it's not that old, we've had problems with this basically since day one, since we got the machine. That's why they kind of put a little extended warranty because Walker actually felt bad for us. Um, and it's still having issues. It's always down on the side of the road not running um there's parts in there that are, you know the ac doesn't work because it needs a bracket and they don't the bracket is like a year out um being overseas and just hydraulic problems um overheating problems still um whacker can't figure it out starting problems um like i said it's it's a used machine when it runs but it's usually sitting in the shop more than it's being used sometimes. Scott, can you talk about the trading? Uh, the, the vehicle is, tr uh, the, the dealers will take it in trade, but with equipment being so far out, no one is really look, putting a number on anything right at this moment. Uh, but there is definitely trade value there. It, it's just that they won't give you that number until you you're really close to delivery depending on condition, how many more hours on it, etc. cetera. Uh, I do have a, going back to the big payloader that was on there, I did get a very rough, you know, they're not holding themselves to it, but they told me that they would, right now if we made a deal today, they, that they would give us $28,000 for that in trade if we came to agreement today. Mm -hmm. So there is there is definitely money available on these vehicles, but no one is putting any firm numbers on it just because of the availability of replacements. And the numbers you have for us are regardless of trading, right? There's yeah, there. these are full retail price. It, it, so the numbers would be less pending trading, but those are full replacement okay. numbers. Thank you. And if you order something now and it's two years out, is the price fixed or does it change? Uh, the, the only thing right now that we're still up in the air is the Vactor truck. The last quote I got a couple weeks ago, there is possibly an escalation charge in that. They, they're not guaranteeing any price hold. Uh, the pickup trucks and the mini loader uh, and the other things, there is no escalation charge in the big dump truck. When you when you buy it, that's signed, sealed, delivered. Just the Vactor truck, for some reason, the manufacturers won't uh, hold pricing on it. I'm not be, I'm not sure it's because the you know you have a chassis, you know, a vehicle manufacturer, and then the body manufacturer. There's two people involved in. Just, no, they won't hold that number. Um, I, something with the prices too, I just realized. Uh, when we talked to all these salesmen, they kind of increased the price a little bit because they're in 
uh, we told them when, you know, our, we'd be going for our town meeting to see when we appropriate the funds. So they kind of adjust their figures depending on what the company's manufacturers were thinking. So it could be a little less too. Um, they gave it a little bit more because everybody knows with this market, you don't know what inflation, you know, price of vehicles are still continually going up and up and up. Um, so they're not sure exactly what the lock-in prices are. So like quote us a little bit more. So it, nothing's because it should be higher than what we're saying right now. Um, the chances are they could actually be less um, once we lock in too. Um, so nothing should be higher than what we quoted in uh, for the meeting. Um, but there's a good chance that things will actually will be cheaper too. I know some of the prices have actually come down of the salesman said, especially like some of the snow plow and things that are quoted in this, some of the pricing has come down. And these prices, I believe we got in, back in August. So there is already a few months of difference of time. Thank you. Sewer roof. Uh, the sewer roofs, uh, when we originally asked in the spring town meeting to replace the sewer, sewer pump stations roofs, we asked for $75,000 and uh, the problem with that uh, escalation of metal and etc and labor cost went up so we need another twenty five thousand dollars to do the job okay and the callahan well oh callahan well reconditioning uh that's a pretty a routine thing so the wells uh get sediment and things in it so they need to be cleaned and restored to improve the amount of water that it's able to pump uh, over time. Like around every, there's three wells there and they go through a cycle and every three to five years, they're tested every year of how much water it can produce. And one of them is the yield is starting to decrease. So it needs to be cleaned uh, and improved so we can pump more water out of it. So it's, it's a, this is a pretty normal procedure for a well of that nature. They get sand and things in some of the veins and they get plugged, so they go in and restore them and you can get more water out of it again. So are there, are there any questions? Um, I, since Scott's up here and there was quite a few capital requests, um, can you see if there's questions, Jen? Or if there's any questions here? Where would this town ever think of coming up with that kind of money? That's one thing. Now let me ask him. We had Carl's come down and help out on East Street a couple weeks ago, a week ago. Let me ask you, if they had a machine break down, one of their machines, who pays for fixing that machine of theirs? They do. They do? Oh, yeah. When we call Carl's or any subcontractor to help us, we just, we're paying them an hourly rate and that's it. If they have any breakdowns or mechanical problems, that's all on them. When those guys come to work here, someday are we gonna pay towards their retirement fund for Carl's? Uh, the prevailing, we pay them a, a, a rate, prevailing wage set by the state. We, we do not dictate that wage. Okay, that, is, listen, that is set by the state. What you just said, we as a town, if we got one of these vehicles that isn't working, whether it's to clean the drains, clean the pipes, if they come and help, we're going to pay a wage. If that vehicle, whatever they bring, breaks down, you just said they're paying for the breakdown. Correct. Because they own that equipment, we were. Do you realize what you just said? <laughs> On all of these things we are doing in town, if we hired Kanetsny or whoever, Weinsitz or Carls, if they come and work, if that vehicle breaks down, it's their pay. They got to fix it. 
Correct. We're paying whatever they charge it. They go home again, and that's it. Their help, their pay. They in years going by, they pay the insurance on those guys, not us. We pay whatever they say. On all these vehicles you just named, if the town can't buy all this whole new fleet, of, you're talking seven or eight, ten million dollars here. A huge amount of money. If we need them, we call them. They come, they help us. When they go home, it's over with. If any of that machinery breaks, they fix it. That's their job. The one difference there, Mr. West, is they have to be available. And they are not always available because they do not work for the town of Hadley. Have you ever called them on a water main or any job that needs to be done? Can you tell me they wouldn't have somebody here? Yes, two Saturday nights ago. We had a water main break at the Green Leaves uh, apartment complex. It, it was somewhat, it was affecting a lot of people. It may or may not have been the town's problem on that line. I called Mr. Konexny at 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. He said, I cannot get guys at this hour. Uh, so we did it, our, made the repair ourselves. And no, he, he, he got is in not, and you did it. Yes, he is not always available to us. He he comes uh, scheduled. He is not available to us 24-7. These vehicles that we're looking for, uh, to replace are needed 24-7 for us. That Vactor truck, if we have a swerve plug or something, we are at somebody else's mercy to come help us. That equipment is not readily available. The sand truck, uh, I could get you the rates. They're probably for a combination truck, you're probably talking $300 an hour now <coughs> to get somebody to come here. No doubt. So, okay. and then. I think it's only 1.6 million, right? The for the one point, yeah, 1.6 million in total for everything on here. And I believe that we are sitting in a building and there's one next door and there's one on North Hadley that was all built in the same year. So. Some of these vehicles have been brought before the capital committee in the town prior and they have been denied. So we're just bringing them back again. Amy, can you tell Mr. West how we're going to finance these? Um, no, go ahead. Oh, no, it's right up there. Some Amy. One Amy or the Amy. other. Oh, sorry, Amy. 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 I mean, I have it in front of me, but you also have it. <laughs> also. <laughs> sorry. Okay. But then that might I'll clear up for you. him. <laughs> so it looks like most of these aren't going to be affected by, um, we're not looking for debt exclusion. So we're looking to borrow within the levy so there won't be an added um, amount added to your tax bill. This is all borrowed within the levy. And because of some, of some of these items are two years out, that's why we're doing it. looks like a lot right here, but you know it's two years out. So they're not getting them all at once. Um, some of them are from sewer reserves, or some of them are water reserves, or some of them are being borrowed. But none of them are going to be a debt exclusion, so we're not going to be adding on to the tax dollar and as an override. We could do that somehow? Yep. Yes, yes, because we've been funding and we've been <coughs> paying down our debt very fast, and we keep adding money and paying down so that we have, um, we're able to put more items in and still keep everything the same. So we're not adding on to the taxes. You being a banker sometime, <laughs> <laughs> what's the interest rate going for right now? Well, I don't know what the interest rate for the town is because they get a better rate than it, what you actually get with your oh, mortgage. The town rate is 7%. No, it's not 7%. <laughs> Linda's doing very well with the, with the what, rates. What, what do you think our newest rate would be? Well, one of them Linda got was under 2% one time. Still? I think. It's, it's they're low. Mm-hmm. 
3%. Thanks to our finance committee, who has given us a triple A bond rating, and Linda and Amy and everybody's hard work, the town is in good position to borrow money. If we need to, but we don't have to because they've made it so that we don't need to affect taxes for these things that we need so desperately. Okay, uh, one more question. Out on our farmers, Wayne Goulet, who has more money than the town has, <coughs> me, uh, we listen. Uh, he has come to us and some of the farmers and he said, why are you buying equipment? No matter what you buy, why are you buying it? Why is the town going to buy this? He said, there's only one way to go. When they wear out, they rust out, our mechanics can't fix them. He says, from now on, we lease everything. These choppers that are running around using for half a million dollars. From now on, we lease them. We can't afford to buy any more equipment on the farm. It's got to be leased. Well, we have looked into lease equipment on other items, um, maybe not right on these particular items, but such as the police cars and things like that. We have been looking at that. And if there is something that's available, they have talked about that. Yeah, um, but it, like it, 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 it has been reviewed. We, 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 we do have some experience with leasing. The, uh, actually, the interest rate we pay on the leases, because we are doing a commercial lease, has been higher than the borrowing rate. And that would be true. Uh, Good questions, Art. Thank you. Uh, when's the next item coming up on the ball fields? We got something coming up there too. That right. will be in here. You'll see that <laughs> soon. Be patient, Art. <laughs> 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 yeah, <that's fine. laughs> no other questions. Does anybody have a question? Anybody on Zoom? I'm looking. Anybody? If you have questions on Zoom, please raise your hand. Okay, we're free to continue onward, which will take us to school ceiling tiles. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much, Select Board, and thank you, members of the public, for being here this evening, and I appreciate you putting together this presentation. The first requests that we have are to replace glued-in ceiling tiles that we have at Hopkins Academy. These are several decades old. Uh, these glued-in ceiling tiles will be replaced with two-by-two two lay-in ceiling tiles. Last year, at the start of school, we had the unfortunate experience, because it was extremely humid, of some of the tiles popping off and falling down. Of course, this poses a safety risk to staff and students. So we're requesting that those are replaced. We have an estimate from Colliers, who did our facilities audit, for $163,400. Our second item are, is for smoke alarm replacements and upgrades. Our alarm vendor indicated that our individual units are old and need to be replaced. In addition to speaking with the vendor for our current system, Chief Spank Nabel has also recommended several upgrades to the system. And the quote we have for this is $21,500. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Doesn't look like there's any questions. Oh. All right. Awkward. The next ones are um, Hadley oh, Media. Nice. There you oh, go. Alex. Alex, you're up. Yes. 
All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, Alex and Marsh, director of Hattie Media here. Um, all right, so we look like we got the uh, camera up here. Um, so there are prices uh, listed in these slides. The prices are uh, state pricing for B&H, uh, which is um, the company that we just go for through for um, uh, all of our equipment. Um, so, all right, so we're in need to replace some of our cameras. Um, one to re um, we have these two cameras here. These just got repaired. However, the third camera had to be scrapped on site in California because at the manufacturer, because it was gonna be it's gonna be too much to uh, have it fixed, and it's the price to have it fixed is the a third of the price of that camera right there. Um, and we cannot find a maker model that is similar to these cameras, nor can we find a. Um, camera that uses the batteries that we have so we're forced to um, get a camera like this um, uh, they're the same brand um, it's uh, just different batteries it's a newer camera uh, this is at uh, 3278 uh, and 53 dollar 53 cents a piece and we're looking to get two of them And all, and by the way, all of this will be um, coming out of the uh, Hadley Media Reserves, which we have 171,000 in there. Yeah, no, no, like a total, like 170,000 of the Hadley Media Reserves all together. The total reserve is what he's asking oh, for. Oh, in your reserve. Okay, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Okay. Yeah, so we'll have plenty of money. Um, all right, so next up is this computer. We, I actually bought this similar, same computer, um, and we're using it right now for those who are watching on YouTube and Facebook um, to uh, live stream this meeting as this forum. Um, this will be um, priced at $2,089.49. Uh, $2, it has the Thunderbolt connections that we need for um, our SDI connections. Um, I'm not expecting everyone to know what I'm talking about when it comes to uh, cabling, so. Um, but uh, it has the, uh, it's, it's powerful enough to do what we need to do for it. All right, so these are a less powerful camera, but um, for right now we are using another computer that is a COA's computer to um, put on the Zoom for this. Um, I'd rather not do that um, going forward, and I'd rather just get a computer that's ours that we could put our um, softwares on it that we need for it. Um, we use Blackmagic stuff, and they require um, certain software, certain drivers to put on these computers to um, to be able to use the uh, the uh, hardware that we have. Um, this will also be used for some of the smaller committees, such as the Climate Change Committee, um, the um, the Diversity equity inclusion committee I got that right got it got it okay um, and um, our and board of health pretty much both of those committees are sitting at tables like these in the COA or in like in a very close space where it's not spaced out like this we can use the owls for those uh, um, for those committees and record onto the computer through a uh, software called open broadcaster software which is absolutely free um, these computers are $994.01. Um, I don't make this up. And uh, we're going to get two of them. All right. We have an immediate need for these tripods. Um, so we got two different tripods in this room right now. One over there we're using. Um, that's fine, but I'm not. The, it's not really the greatest one. Uh, it's actually very awkward to use. That one is broken, and there's other broken ones. Um, that that in the back is like the only non-broken one um, to the point where I actually had to buy a new one immediately go back to the other slide thank you sorry um, and uh, so and I'm looking to get three more um, so we can keep our cameras steady um, and all that so we're getting three of them at three hundred forty eight dollars and sixty nine cents all right, so um, 
There is a the anticipation of hiring a production assistant. Fingers crossed. There's interviews tomorrow, um, and hopefully, some high school interns will um, join us through a grant from the schools. Um, so they would be able to uh, help us out with um, various events that could be live switch, such as um, sporting events. Where if we did a tournament um, game, the MIA does require a student helper if we want to live stream it. Otherwise, they charge us twenty-five dollars, and we are not allowed to live stream. Um, and for anything like town meeting, graduation, we can have a, a free four-person crew, and we will be able to communicate with them. This is all one set, so it's free in one set, uh, $444.58. All right. Um, okay, so software is not really capital, per se, but um, it is a one-time cost, which is why I'm including it. Right now, we're using um, Adobe. Um, we're using Adobe Creative Suite, which has um, Photoshop, After, After Effects, uh, Premiere. Um, it's costing the town $668 a year. We're looking at four uh, DaVinci Resolve licenses at $256 a piece um, with uh, three, 53 cents. These are one-time um, costs, so we're not paying subscriptions, and we can use those uh, of our dollars to use for items such as Caster, which is how we're streaming to two different um, online platforms. Um, we're able to get something called media fire so we can share files over stations, especially sports. Um, I share with the away team, away team station um, for their communities. Um, this is a very, very well designed um, software. Um, it's very robust. It has, uh, it's well known for their color correction. So if you've seen some of the recent Marvel movies and all um, similar movies to those, um, this software is used for it, um, according to their website. So, very good software. Mm -hmm. um, all right, we can go to the next slide. This is the cheapest one, uh, 4124 uh, uh, license. This is called Affinity Photo. Um, it's a Photoshop replacement. It is easier to use, and unlike Photoshop, it has spell check, which I desperately need. Um, so, yeah, if anyone's used Photoshop, it's pretty much the same thing. It's a carbon copy. Um, yeah, so the rest of the funds will be used to buy the necessary accessories, batteries, cables, cases, and connectors for the items listed um, in the slideshow with some leftover for of our unit to pay say, cost. We're not using the full 20000 um, We're only using a, a portion of it. Um, these seem like very expensive purchases. However, these are necessary purchases in order for the department to run efficiently. Um, my contact information is on the uh, slide, so if anyone has any questions, you can email or call. Um, and I'm able to answer questions tonight if need be. Thank you. Yep. There are no questions online. I'm easy. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, Alex. All right, I'm going to move on to prior year bills. These are bills that <coughs> come in after July 1st that were purchased during uh, the, the prior year, which would be 2020, fiscal year 2022, so the end of June 30th. Any bill that comes in after that, um, we cannot, after a certain period of time in July, we cannot pay uh, previous year's bills. So it has to go to town meeting to approve. So these were the bills that were left over that were not we did not get invoiced for until after July 1st of this year. Any questions? All right. Next um, is Mary Remote. She is me. Mary Thayer. We'll go over the remaining CPA articles. Hi, Mary. Hi there, how are you? Good. We can hear you, so whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, when the CPA, when town meeting approves the CPA article, there's usually a time limit on when it needs to be used. And we usually have two years. 
and these two need a little more time. The, the library window and bracket is, a bracket was taken off of Hooker School and the library intends on using, they save these old brackets and they want to um, install them and they just hadn't gotten to it yet with um, having trouble finding someone to do it for various reasons. Um, so they asked for another year extension. And the Hockenheim Cemetery fence, um, this is part of the, there's been several articles on this and so it, it is active, most of the money's been used, but it may not be, for this first section of it, may not be completely done by the special town meeting. So again, asking for another year extension. For these articles, um, these are articles just like we saw with some of the capital ones earlier that they either were not done or they were done and there's extra money. Um, the Russell School roof, 8,000 a couple years ago had been approved. Um, it, it actually needs a lot more than just 8,000. And, and so there, there's a committee looking at what Russell School needs. Um, in the meantime, this 8,000 will be returned to the CPA and it came out of the historic fund. So it goes back into the historic set aside part of the CPA fund. The emergency rental assistance was voted on for $25,000. Um, I, I think it's wonderful Hadley did that. Nobody actually um, was approved to use that $25,000. The state put in a lot of money for um, rental assistance. And so that program is ended and the $25,000 can come back. And that goes into the housing set aside. Russellville Cemetery work um, was repairing and cleaning stones. And that was done. Um, it was originally a higher price, but I think it was about thirty thousand. But fifteen eight ten um, was not needed of that bid, so that amount is coming back. And the picnic tables um, for the pavilion at the Hadley Elementary School was completed, and these were the extra funds there. Here's Article 8. Um, we, the Hockenham Cemetery fence, had, the stone wall is now gone. Um, and the, the bids for this, even with hiring a consultant to update the bids, they still came in higher than needed. And, and there was, there was um, the main part of this bid, and then there was one to do some, um, the turf against the road to put reinforced uh, underneath the turf so that when cars pull up there in the muddy season, they aren't sinking into the lawn. Um, and then also to do a pillar at the, at the south end, right near the South Hadley line, um, using some of these old stones to kind of commemorate the, the, the wall that used to be there. And to do all that, we're asking for the, the cemetery committee is asking for another $25,000. And with the, just the inflation that they've had, um, it came in, that's why they're asking for the additional money. The Hopkins playing fields, um, the school committee came to us um, and in, Dr. Ann McKenzie and they had done phase one, um, 600,000 was used out of CPA funds to do phase one of the, at the Hopkins fields, which is replacing a lot of the turf that's out there. Phase two kind of completes the project. It's putting in what they need, it's backstops, it's um, all the equipment they need, it's a paved walking path around it, which a lot of people are using and there's an entrance to that from Middle Middle Street. Um, and they have, you know, they've broken it all down. Um, the CPA committee reviewed this with them and recommended it be brought to town meeting. The, it has a big price tag, about a million six. Um, and what we're looking at doing is, take, is actually Bonding, um, 750,000 of it, the total, um, 1,546,000 is the total. And 
we, we have actually enough in the CPA fund um, to pay for the whole thing, but it would really limit what we might be able to do in the next few years. So we, we felt it was appropriate to bond. Um, this bonding works a little differently than town bonding. It doesn't affect the tax rate. The, when it's bonded, um, the funds to pay for the principal and interest each year come out of the CPA funds each year. And the bonding would be, depending on the time, the length of time, it might be between 70 and 90,000 a year. Um, we took in a little over 500,000 last year between what the state paid and what the town paid. So it, you know, it still enables us to do quite a bit, but it gives us more flexibility if we bond the 750,000 since it's, it is a large price tag. Absolutely. Yeah. The, um, assuming that the, the clawback, the, the one that we saw of the housing set aside and the, um, all goes through, they'll have the total amount in the CPA and just CPA fund is 3,110. About 700,000 of that has already been promised to, or approved for other projects. So what's available is 2,411. Um, and with the two that we're looking at, the cemetery wall and the, um, the field tier, um, it's a million six thirty six is what is looking. So if we didn't bond, we'd be down to seven hundred seventy five thousand. Now, of available of that two hundred eight thousand is set aside in the housing. So it was about five hundred sixty-seven thousand, and we try not to go under five hundred thousand, just to be able to. If something comes up, we don't want to be able to not fund something that the town really wants to do. With the bonding, we'll have a million five, um, still available with two hundred thousand of that out of housing, and then the million three or so out of, um, you know, available for future projects. It's, we're looking, we probably won't have to borrow for a year. They don't think they'll start for a year. Um, and we're looking at either, we, we would prefer 10 years, um, 15, even higher is a possibility. 10 years would be about 90,000 a year, depending on what the interest rates are in a year. Um, it was estimated that might be about four and four, four and a quarter percent or so, um, in a year, but, um, so we'll look at it then. A lot depends on if there's any other big projects that come forward next year. Thank you. <coughs> there was, you know, this is a lot of money. There, the committee, the CPA committee really felt that this benefits the whole town, certainly benefits the, the high school and all the, the junior high and all the sports teams that, um, play here, um, but it's also used a lot by the community. And it seems like there's a lot of value. The school has a lot of plans, um, and this is the only part of it that can be used at CPA funds. Um, you can't use other parts to fix the school itself with CPA funds, but the fields do with the open space, recreation, there's a possibility. You're talking from day one, Art? Yeah. Overall price tax, so. Well, well, first of all, let's try this. Sure. How much did we spend on those fields last year? How much did we spend on the fields on phase one? On or phase one, if that's what you're calling. Sure. 600,000. How much? 600. Of CPA funding. And then I don't we care. Where's the funding? Yeah, and then we have roughly 200,000. Hey, Mary, 600,000. 
That was CPA funds. I don't care where it comes from. Is there anybody in this room been on those fields? Have you been on any of those games on those fields? No. I have any of you? I've gone, I've watched the kids play. I don't live in town, so. Yeah. Hey, Mary, right now, let's take the boys' soccer field. That field should be as level as this table. In the seam of that field going down, it's a foot higher than either side. That's one thing. Mining. Okay? It's from, uh, to get to that field from the parking lot, it's further from here to the, than the library. Now, most people in town, they don't go to this game anyway. There's a fellow out there this year, I didn't ask who he was, was going with a walk, and the grass is that high. You, that's a long walk, and he had quite a job. I, a question, so keep him okay. I told him, hey, listen, you could drive up there and watch the game in the car and stuff. You won't hurt that field a bit. Art, excuse me, this is really a question, period. Okay. But correct me if I'm okay. getting away from You're that. getting away. So your question was, how much did we spend on phase one? Okay, we got that. We got that. And your next question is? What's the next phase? And where's the field going to be? Is it going to be near the park? If they do the baseball field, varsity field, is that going to be somewhere near I the think uh, parking lot? Dr. McKenzie can answer these questions. Yes. So now what will happen in phase two is that we will revise the existing softball and baseball fields. And I know that other people, well, the proposed ball fields, you can see that. So you see. Which one is which here? The, the ones on the left are the one on the outskirts of the driveway around the edges. No? Or is it here that. It looks like the parking is right here. There's your parking right there. And the baseball field's at the bottom, Art. It's the okay. bigger diamond. Okay, it's softball right field's so at the, the top. So the plan, I guess, hopefully, is to keep them in there. That's what it is. It's yeah. Proposed ball fields. And the white roofs are the building now, the school. And then there's stairs. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be able to get to it. And there's sidewalks leading down, it appears. And Art, you know that field can't be perfectly level because the water will stay there forever. It's got to be pitched. No you mean now that on the, currently on the soccer field? Well, any of it. No matter, okay. at the end of the day, it's got to be pitched somehow. Otherwise, it's just going to collect water and be a pond. So you can't expect that it's going to be perfectly flat. Are there I any other questions? To answer his question, I've been going to most of these games. This year, when it rained hard on the varsity baseball field, the infield, for at least till the next morning, might have water collected on it. And by the next morning, that water's all gone. Now, somewhere, they put some drains in it. Okay? So that's going to take care of any water on those fields, hopefully, if they did it right. So anything else in this money, Dr. McKenzie? Yeah. Um, Annie Morris Freeman is asking for it to be noted that this article will take two-thirds votes to pass. At the time, Amy? Yes. yes. Does it have to come before the rep we're voting later? I believe that's a Mary Thayer question. It, the CPA bonding actually, once it's passed at town meeting, it's passed. It does not need to have a ballot vote later. But it does need to be passed by two thirds vote. Andy's correct. And yeah, there's no money to your tax dollar. Uh, correct. Mary, can I ask you a question on what we were planning on here in, I don't know how many phases. Is there any reason we couldn't go out there with the amount of equipment we had last summer and finish up that whole project this summer? Is there any reason we can't do that? Well, it is going to get done. She's talking about how many, how many phases? Is there a two. phase next year? Two. Here? This is it. You had one. This is two. This is the done final. deal. All this done. Summer. All done. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you.
I'm not sure exactly when it'll be started, if it's next summer or a little later, but I know if, if this passes, they'll certainly be um, ready to start soon. We can go forward and put it out to bid, and then we got to get going on it. Uh, who can bid on this job? Mary. I'll take I'm not the one to answer that. In Massachusetts, we have open procurement, and any qualified um, bidder can bid on projects. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Next. Any no other questions? That's it? Okay. So right. <laughs> take no action. So I the like next two articles, um, it came to my attention on Tuesday that they did not need to be on the warrant. And um, there will be a vote to take no action on Article 10 as well as Article 11. And 12 is non-binding. Yeah, we can go to Article 12 yeah. now. Perfect. Well, it's not binding and it's not, I believe just for clarification, regardless of the outcome of this, it does not affect the money coming from the state for how they say. Right, okay. Just wanna make that, just in case anyone had any questions before we go through it. Jack, did you wanna come up? Did you wanna? <clears throat> Hello. So a few weeks ago, we had an information session right here in this building, and we got lots of public input about how to adjust the resolution declaring a climate crisis. Uh, at our last meeting of the Halley Climate Change, we did that. We added a preamble. We added some motivations, but in general, it stays pretty close to what we had put out at that point. And when it comes to the town meeting, we are going to pass around the updated version and um, let the community decide. And you're gonna make an amendment? Yes. Right, yes. so you should let people know that? Yeah, I will. Um, so we will make an amendment before, well, at town meeting that we have adjusted the climate statement and we'll have copies to pass out to everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the moderator is aware of that as well. Yeah. Will Wait. there be a way to get this amended uh, version out before town meeting so people can read it before town meeting? Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. it will be live on the website with a copy of the warrant reminding everybody to come see us on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Thank you. Yes. Any Anything questions else? for Jack? Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. And that concludes the program. That's it. All right. We have the uh, select board. We have one um, consent agenda we item. We're, we're done with the. We are done with the forum. Thank you all for coming. You're welcome to stay and watch this monumental vote that's about to happen. <laughs> not, so, re not really. <laughs> <laughs> so, on our consent agenda tonight is the approval of the minutes of the meeting of uh, October 19th, 2022. That was last night. Motion to accept last night's minutes. Second. Okay. Second by Randy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Passes unanimously. Thank motion you. to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Amy. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed?